Alrighty guys, good afternoon, more Medic One. Today we're going to be going over uh, how a charging system works on a small engine, whether it be a Kawasaki or a Kohler or a Briggs. The principles are all the same. You have a voltage regulator, a B positive, which goes straight to your battery. They just have it uh, connected to the coil, I mean the uh, starter solenoid battery post and your two white wires coming off of your stator under the flywheel when you remove the flywheel off of your engine it's going to look like this and on the underside of the flywheel are going to be permanent magnets all in a row like this and then your stator mounts to the engine block and then this mounts to your crankshaft so this is stationary that's why they call it a stator stationary this stays put and then the flywheel turns around this and produces ac voltage whenever you hook your voltmeter here on ac you put your lead here and your lead here and at wide open throttle, you should be getting somewhere around 35 to 40 volts AC. When your engine is running, you are feeding those 40 volts AC into the voltage regulator. This voltage regulator converts the AC voltage to 12 volts DC automatically. The only thing you need to be double sure is that it's grounded good. This one's got a ground strap. Sometimes they mount these to a metal engine tin. So it's grounded by itself, but sometimes they opt to put a ground wire on here. So when the engine's running, you should be getting 13.8 to 14.8 from this terminal. That's with a good battery. If the battery is not connected, it's not going to excite the uh, the voltage regulator and the charging system is not going to be operational until you have a load through it, which is would be a low battery. Or once the battery comes up, this senses that the battery is charged and it basically shuts off. So it's all automatic, real good system. Uh, Briggs, like I said, Kohler, Kawasaki, uh, Onan, just any of your small engines, they've all gone to this style of charge system. Real super easy to diagnose. Like I said, you just, when the engine's running, you get about 40 volts AC here. If you're getting less than that, say like 20, that means one of your legs has a short in it or a break. Uh, there is vibration and all this is, is coated copper wire and you could get a break or corrosion sets in and then that separates and then you're only getting half the voltage that you need to make it work. So when you're getting your 40 volts here and you get nothing out of here, then you know your voltage regulator is bad. I have videos uh, in, the, in the past, I'll put a link in the description below uh, about the video that I have, that I actually have a tester for a voltage regulator. I will try to find that video, like I said, and I'll put it in the link below. Um, that tester is from Kohler, but it, it'll test Kawasaki and it'll test Briggs. It actually puts a load on it and isolates the machine from, uh, it just takes the guesswork out of trying to diagnose a voltage regulator. Some of the common fail points, I do see stators go bad. I see regulators go bad. And I've seen the wiring harnesses that connect the, the two systems together fry all because maybe a bad battery had a short in it and uh it's just no bueno uh if you have a bad battery that's having a an issue with a cell it's sensing that the battery's low and it's sitting there charging trying to charge a battery that's no good and so it just puts extra load on the whole system and causes parts to fail but most of the time, nine times out of 10, if your engine's not charging, it's gonna be the regulator. Some of the common mistakes that I see uh, when people re try to repair these, their engine's not running correctly or the engine has no spark, they'll replace this thinking that this is what's making the engine uh, make it spark. Now, 
I can get where they're coming from with that because an outboard motor has a stator that utilizes the charging system and the ignition system. So I can see where that could get confusing, but this has zero, absolutely nothing to do with ignition on a small engine. Bad engine grounds, bad harness grounds, loose battery connections. That's the first thing that you need to check before we start replacing and diagnosing uh, the charging system. Because if you have a loose battery connection, you're gonna get weird readings. You're not gonna get the correct readings, uh, especially when you're trying to diagnose the, the regulator. If you have any questions about charging systems on small engines, please let me know. More Medic One. Have a great day.